Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the main event. I'm Daniel, and uh, yeah, we're we're still in WCW. This is Super Brawl One: The Return from the Rising Sun, which is alluding to the uh, well, the main event actually, the whole uh, Super Show One debacle that we had to deal with. Well, we had to deal with it last night on the episode. They dealt with it month before. before. So let's get into it. Going back to May 19th, 1991. We're at the Bayfront Arena in St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, in front of 6,000 fans. Back to those big WCW crowds. And uh, the main event. It's a WCW title match. Uh, we got two referees. Let's just be clear on this right now. We got two referees out there. You got the official on the inside, you got uh, an extra official on the outside. World title match, uh, Tatsumi Fujinami versus Ric Flair. Now, this uh, match was, uh, it was, again, I'll just say, I won't go too big on a rant on what happened at Super Brawl, or sorry, at Super Show 1, uh, although if you want to hear me bitch vent about it, check out that episode, or that uh, video. Uh, well, but I'm not a lot. I was just not really looking forward to this match. Like, after that first one, I'm just kind of like, ah, I don't, do I really even want to watch this match. I was like, well, I got to do it because I'm doing the show. So I was like, all right, let's get into it. But I just like, you know, I already had my standard set. So it wasn't, once again, it's not the match, it's just the BS that surrounds it. And I don't know why it bugs me. It just, it does. It bugs the shit out of me. All right. So, uh, once again, you know the build up, uh, Flair, you know, and WCW officials claim that since uh, Tatsumi Fujinami threw Flair over top rope, uh, and the fact that, you know, Bill Alfonso, who was the appointed official in that match, uh, did not make the final decision or whatever, that uh, the title change was not legal, and guess what? We're going to have a rematch. The weird thing with this rematch is, once again, because of WCW, or sorry, of a uh, the Japan audience was told one thing in the last pay-per-view, and we were told something totally different. They're still going there. So, Tatsumi Fujinami, who, by the way, NWA is, is not putting him like, you're, you're not a champion at all, is still considered the NWA champion over there. Right? So, the Japanese audience who was watching Super Brawl 1, the storyline was, this, or the match was a title versus title match again, but this time it was the NWA title versus the WCW title. And uh, over here, of course, it was just WCW title only. Uh, and it's weird because they're kind of building up like it was Flair trying to not only defend the honor of WCW, but the honor, or you know, defend the honor of America. Which is so weird because it's just like, that's what WWF's doing over over there on their show with the whole Hogan versus Sergeant Slaughter thing. So this seems weird they're trying to do it here. But the fact that it's Flair doing it, for one, and the fact that it's like he he's not defending the honor of WCW or America. If anything, Flair's the biggest asshole in the bunch because he cries about being screwed out of his title just so, you know, and then WCW's like, yeah, there's your title. That never happened. And it's like, what? So, I don't know, to me, just, it, like, how, how are they making Flair the good, trying to make the good guy here? I don't know. So anyway, that's that's the match set. Let's get to the actual match. The match itself wasn't bad. I mean, it was pretty much the same as it was over there. Uh, but they kept harping on the fact that Bill Alfonso is the outside referee, just in case something happens to the inside referee. Keep that in mind. WCW ain't really subtle. They're not subtle in these early days. They're just like, you know what? We're going to tell you how this match is going to end. Don't you worry about that. Um, now, the ironic thing was that... The two referees that was involved in the Super Show 1 match are the same two referees here. It's just the roles are reversed. Now, the guy, you know, the outside referee or whatever from the last match, he's the inside referee, and Bill Alfonso, who's the inside referee last time, he's the outside referee. So, the match goes back and forth, and then we get to the end. Sure enough, uh, the Japanese referee gets, gets taken out. He's still in the ring, though, which I think is funny, because it's like, it's not like he can't, you know, he's like, I don't know, he, he, he's just down, he's not like completely like unconscious or whatever, but uh, Ric Flair goes for it, and I, 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 he went for a roll-up, what I went for, and dude, Alfonso's in there quickly, Flair has a handful of tights, and dude, from the vantage point that you see, Alfonso, there's no way he didn't see the tights being held at all, 
And he just goes through the pin anyways. One, two, three. Ric Flair retains the title. Unless he's in Japan, and then he won the NWA, team, or the NWA title back. Either way, Flair wins. And of course, Tatsumi uh, Fujinami's pissed. And uh, Flair gets out of there. He's just like, yep, I won. I won. And from a cynical, chubby asshole's perspective, watching this match, to even a kayfabe perspective, how does that not just scream screw job? Like, seriously. Like, what? Like, to me, it just would have made more sense overall for the Japanese audience and the American audience. Just, it's a WCW title match versus the uh, IGPW. Where the fuck the, the Japanese title is called? Why well, is it called New Japan title? Like, why do they got different initial? I don't know. Uh, I'm on a rampage. I'm just going to take it on everybody. Anyways, it just seems like it would make more sense to have the title, you know, have it title for title. Fujinami wins. You can still have the whole, like, well, he threw me on top rope and different referee. And then just have the rematch Super Brawl, where it's now Tatsumi Fujinami's the champion. And Rick Flair's got to win it back. And I think I would just been better with that. This, to me, just seems like, almost like they didn't want to leave the title over Japan. And they're like, well, listen, you can win the title. But bring it back home. And he got fussy about it. He's like, you know what, fine. In your country... You can tell her about your NWA champion, but we know where it counts, where it matters in our company, that you're not the champion, and we're going to take it back anyways. And he's like, well, fine. And then when I lose the uh, the rematch, you can't pin me cleanly. you got to screw me over, so you got to grab my tights. And Flair's like, fine. Ain't like I hadn't done that before. And it, I don't know. I, I want to know more about what really went on during these matches and why they're just... They're uh, displayed differently or whatever, presented in two different formats. I don't know. It just it, it just seems odd. And once again, I just feel like it's just unnecessary bullshit because the matches themselves are fine. I'll get that way right now. I like the matches, but it just seems like, why all this unnecessary shit like, thrown on top of it? I don't know. And maybe, I mean, once again, it may have just been the coming time. You, know, you hear everybody talk about Jim Hurd's WCW stuck, so maybe this is maybe what they're alluding to. Maybe it was just chaos and I don't know. So, uh, yeah, that, so Flair wins it. Um, the fallout from this, ironically enough, uh, of course, uh, Flair would, uh, A, they would keep the tiles together for like another year. I think, because, you know, once again, it was just this weird thing where it's like, it's one belt and there's two titles, attached, and they didn't really change it up for like another year or so when they did finally separate the titles into two, two physical championships, the NWA title and the WCW title. Um, but then, uh, you know, and then of course there's a whole dispute about the belt anyways because Ric Flair would eventually, sorry, I dropped my remote, uh, He this was his last pay-per-view with the company for a while. He would actually leave and go up north where things are somewhat more, more normal. And, uh, of course, there's a whole dispute about, oh, I think it was over money or whatever. Uh, but he was actually the legal owner of the belt itself. And so he was like, I want my money, you owe me. They wouldn't do it, so he took the belt with him to WWF, uh, which was brilliant, I thought. Uh, and even more brilliant now that I'm, you know, now I'm learning more about what was actually having time. So I was like, it's just awesome. Uh, of course, they would eventually get the title back and they'd settle on or whatever the case was. But, uh, yeah. So we got to look forward to right now. So, uh, so yeah. Overall, I, I mean, once again, the match is fine. I just kind of feel like I don't know. This it feels like uh, Tatsumi Fujinami was kind of shortchanged here, just all, all around. Like it didn't make him make him or this company look as you know. I don't know. It made WWE look petty more than it didn't. It didn't the fact that it made them look or you know the New Japan look bad. It's made WWE look petty uh, on all all basis of this thing. Uh, so, I don't know. It was just kind of like... And then they do two more. They do like two or three more super shows. So, I'm just hoping that we don't have this weird confusion throughout. Because I, I don't know if I can handle any more of that. Uh, so, anyways, yeah. Let me know what you guys thought, though. Maybe, maybe I'm just being an asshole right now. And I'm unjustifiably upset about it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. My God. I'm going to tune in next week. Are you kidding me? We're doing Great American Bash 91. And can we not get away from WCW for a minute? Oh, my God. All right, fuck it. I'm in. I'm in. Let's roll. Let's do it. Great American Bash, 91, next week. Be here. All right, guys, that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time.